beautiful peace blessings and enough love to everyone thank you all very much for coming to this wonderful webinar which is on passive globally changing lives deep dive webinar where we not only go deep into everything that the company has to offer but also we go deep into your concerns so whatever your concerns are whatever your issues are whatever your wrinkles are whatever your situation is in on passive we deep dive into it and so at this time we are going to deep dive into the song of the hour and this song on the top of the hour here at 8 um, 12 p.m um, eastern daylight time we'll be looking at lirato of course and it is in it to win it because that's where we are we are in it to win it and so without any further ado please uh, listen watch our own wonderful international singing artist lirato shadir
wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> we are in it to win it. And this is the only place, this is the only place that you actually can be in it to win it. The only place, which is on passive. Wonderful. So as on passiveans, we are in it to win it. Exciting times because I'm telling you, it's coming to the counting down. We are now in the launching process and it is awesome. But one thing, um, a lot of persons ask, what are we supposed to be doing now? No one need to um, invite founders. We don't need to invite people to become founders because the founder's position is closed. Founder's position is closed. So what are we to do? Nothing. Um, no, we need to be doing a few things. And um, one of the few things that we need to be doing is KYB. <laughs> That's what we need to be doing right now. KYB. No your business <laughs> hey. that's what we need to be doing now know your business because um you know founders this is your business founders this is your business this is not on passive business this is not ashmafari business this is your business right um and so what do we do in order to know your business? One, log into your virtual office. Log in um, at least once a day. Minimum, at least once a day. If you do tw two times or three times, fine, more thumbs up to you. But at least one time for the day, just log in, look around, especially check your updates, um, etc., etc. But look, um, one of the things that you need to be definitely doing, if you haven't done it already, please ensure that you do it now um, before the day is over, before the, 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 the week is over. Um, please ensure that all the founders position that you have, you, your name that you are, that you are managing, from once you are managing an account, please go into the account and make sure that your name is there. Your name, first name, last name, your phone number, your, um, your country. Um, because if you are managing the account, especially for a minor, make sure that your name is there um, so that you can do the KYC. Um, if you are giving it over to someone who is um, not a minor, um, please do that before so that that person can do the KYC so that they can attach the O wallet to their bank, respective bank account. But for a minor, make sure that you, your name is there and not the minor name is there, not the child um, name is in there. Um, and check your NDA, ensure that your signature is there. All right. So, um, Hi, Roy Davis. Um, good to have you also. Um, Tanya Williams, I see a hand coming to you. Um, and thank you very much. But the key thing that we want to be looking at and also addressing is our mindset. Is our mindset. All right. Um, so, so while we take this hand, um, which is... Tanya, go ahead. While we take this on, we get prepared for the mindset. Hi, good evening, Dr. Derek, and good evening, everyone in Opassive community. How are you guys doing? Great. I am, something you just said, Dr. Derek, um, I had bought an account, which I am gifting. I've gifted to my brother, um, but he's using, I bought it in my name. And so my my email address and my name, uh, my um my information that I wanted, I've, I've gifted it to him already. I've given him the, the login information for him to access the account. But how do I get 
to, to get for him to transfer everything into his name into his personal information uh, you just go into the virtual office and you change everything in profile oh i thought i couldn't change the email address though i can still change no 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 you're not changing the email <laughs> why are we concentrating on email addresses because it's my personal email address i had used no, well, i you cannot give it to him because well, if you're giving it to him you have to give him access to your email yeah, well, it was, it was one of account, one of the one an account I had created in my name, so it's not like it's I something I use every day. So he can have that account. Okay, good. Okay, so I, I I just go in my virtual office and just change my name to his name. That is correct. I try. Uh, let it. me okay. let me let me show you that quickly. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Because that might be a little important for a few other people also. So let us take a quick look at that. Um, so when you log in, and I should think that everyone knows how to log in by now. All right. But should in case we're not too sure on the process to log in. All right. So that's the login um, screen, right? Preferably if you are using a desktop or a laptop, um, please do these here. This is one tab. This is another tab. Everything is on your web browser. So the difference between a web browser and a search engine, there's a difference. Um, the search engine is to search Google or Yahoo, um, using Google or Yahoo to search you know, for things that you want. But the web browser, so down here would be your search engine and your, you know, search, you know, um, what is technology, um, what is um, what is on passive, uh, what is, um, you know, Burj Khalifa, you know, you, if you want to search for something you use down here. But when you're looking for a web address or a domain name or a email address, or you want to go to all founders or you want to go to amazon um etc etc now you use your web browser and so therefore um these would be tabs right so this is my all founder tab this is my gmail tab right i click this little plus sign to add another tab for my web browsing. So if I want to put in amazon.com, A-M-A-Z-O-N.com, right? In my web browser to go to that website. So the web browser goes to websites um, and search engine, search for things that you want to look for. All right, so the web browser one of the things that you can do if you are using a laptop, a computer, is to click on these three little dots at the top right, and you can um, click on uh, hover over bookmarks and then go across to show bookmark bar. So if I click um, uncheck the, the bookmark bar, if you notice that little bar at the bottom is now missing, so I go back, bookmarks, and go over to show bookmark bar. And, um, and this little bookmark bar comes up. So I can actually save things down here for easy access. All right. So um, click on my login. And of course, the access code is sent successfully. And uh, also, please, if you didn't already do it already, do it now, um, which is in your in your Gmail, in your Google account. You click on your picture or you click on the initial that is in the top right and you click on manage your Google account and click on security on the right left hand and scroll down a little to where it says to where it says recovery phone num phone and recovery email. This is very important, especially for Gmail, because if you don't remember your email for your Gmail, 
then you know when you click on forget password then this is what um, is necessary for that recovery so make sure that you have that all right so okay we are looking for the access code and you notice how long ago i i think um so it's six four five one eight five so it's six four five one eight five and you notice i still have three minutes and 41 seconds so it's six four five one eight five so please delete because you're not going to use that again so whenever you have a access code um please to delete it because it's only one time that you are going to actually use um, that access code so please delete it all right and i click on login i still have over three minutes there so five minutes is a very long time you don't need to worry all right so this is your virtual office or dashboard on your virtual office or some people say back office i don't into the back i am no more in the back i am up front 100 with on passive so this little picture that is over on my right hand top screen or maybe some of you still have your initial in there you click on that and you click on my profile and this is where you change the name First name, last name can be changed to whoever, phone number, and the country. And you click on the country that you are in. So if you are managing um, all your accounts, please do make sure that your name is here. Um, if you are giving it over to someone, please to put their name here, um, their phone number, um, and their country. Then you right. have the title of your video. Very, very important. Right. Please to ensure that that information is correct. Now, if you are changing it over to someone else, you would need to also um, send a ticket to support. So you go to your, your picture again, and then you click on raise ticket. Um, your name and everything would be there already. Um, so what you're going to do for category, click on NDA and then you write a message there that um, I hand over this account to the person who is responsible for the account and would like a new NDA for that person to sign. Um, and then you scroll, go down, click send in order to submit that information. Then um, from the support team will send you that information or tell you what to do all right so though that would be the step that you would need to take um in order to to get that done okay yes thank you dr terry appreciate all right, it thank Tanya. you very much all right wonderful okay all right so let me unstop sharing all right so that is it in a nutshell all right okay so um we are going to be looking at financial readiness that is one of the the mindset because the money is there the money is there i said that right so we don't have to worry or fret about that what we need to worry about is our own personal mindset why because we have recognized studies have shown um, that persons that get a lot of money, um, which of course includes, which of course includes people who win lotto, lot of money they get into. Um, celebrities, um, you know, get into a lot of money, and what happened to them? They either squander it, buy drugs, do this, do that, foolishness and try to evade tax and they end up in jail so nothing is wrong with getting money what you need to have is the right mindset in order to deal with that type of money because let's face it um when you're working your job and you're working that nice big fat fifty thousand a year 
Now, 50,000 a year and 50,000 a month, <laughs> we're going to need, a, Edgar, we're going to need a different mindset for 50,000 a month. You understand? And don't, talk, don't even talk about 50,000 a day. Then that is a totally different mindset that you're going to need for 50,000 a day. <laughs> Mercy. Okay. So please be advised that most definitely it will be a different mindset in respective to where, um, especially to where wealth is concerned. It's a different mindset. And so therefore, um, he has five children, married, lovely wife with five children, um, has his PhD um, in clinical biochemist, chemical engineer, um, chemical and biochemical engineer. And, and also he has his MBA and um, in pharma, pharmaceutical industry, um, left the corporate America actually, and is now um, presently dealing with financial services. Um, so he can advise um, to, in respective to where a few financial things are concerned. Um, and so he is a senior marketing director um, currently and with the World Financial Group. And so he lives in New Jersey, USA, with his lovely family. And of course, we are talking none other than Dr. John. So without any further ado, I ask you all to turn your attention in a few minutes after we take the question of Rita. Go ahead, Rita, quickly. Thank you for the opportunity. Please, I just want to clarify from the explanation you gave to the previous uh, question. For the pending funder's position, can one see pay and do these changes you just talked about? The pending? Yes. Pending founders? pending founders are cans. Okay. If you have pending founders in your virtual office, then the yes. door is still open for them to pay that $97. So they need to, that person with that email address would need to um, log in, use the email address and the password. If, you, if the person remember the password, just go to ofounders.net put in that email address, put in the password, then the next page that will pop up is to pay that $97 and you just continue from there. Okay. After the payment, we can now continue with the changes? What changes? Like handing over the account because the, pen, the individual that has that pending account is saying he can no longer continue and he cannot fund the account. No, well, if the person um, if the person not going to pay the ninety seven dollars, then we can't do anything about that account. That is, those okay. accounts are for the person who sign up so, with those accounts. Okay, no, that's it's, their, it's can... their personal email address. So oh, you know okay. that person would not want to hand over their email address when they're getting other stuff in that email. Okay. So those are oh. those pending position is not to give to somebody else it is to oh, okay. um it's for those persons who started the process to just continue the process basically okay okay all That's right fine. thank you so much wonderful yeah welcome rita anytime all right thank you very much and as i said before um none other than dr john um to give us some financial readiness because that's what we need. Dr. John. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you, Dr. Derek. And uh, I just wanna welcome everybody uh, who's on this platform, 324 of us and counting. I hope um, you're here because you really want to make on passive work for you and your family. Uh, for those of you who have been with us for the last couple of weeks, you know we have been dabbling on different areas of financial readiness. And um, for this particular session, 
I sort of decided to start with the basics again and look at not really the basics, but some of the more immediate things we need to start focusing on. And uh, as Dr. Derek said, you know, we need to start uh, doing your KYB, know your business and make sure that you're ready for the business so that when that money starts to come, um, you can figure out how to quickly start getting it into your pocket, how we as a whole family can start getting it into our pocket. And then I will spend some time very briefly just talking about some concepts of where you can actually um, start some ideas of where you can start dropping that money so that it becomes um, worth creating and we don't end up making the same mistakes that other people have actually done when they've come across a lot of money. So I'm going to start here by sharing my screen. And um, okay, I hope you can see my screen clearly. Thumbs up, Dr. D Derek, if it's clear. Great, okay. So even though I said I shared that one, it sort of disappeared on me. So I go back to this one. So we're gonna talk about deep dive. So this is series number four. And for this one, just remember, where are we now? If you think about it, remember what I said, pre-launch process, the pre is gone. You can cross it any way you wanna cross it. And really what we're doing now is that we're actually in the launching process of OnPassive. And if we're in the launching process, then we have to be fully in the launching phase of our readiness also. We don't have to start going around and tinkering about things. We need to make sure that we are at the point where we are ready, 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 ready for the dollars, for the apples, for whatever greens to start flowing. So I called this now the launch readiness. And two things that I really want to talk about here, as I mentioned, is making sure that we can activate our accounts and just some ideas of what to start doing with the money when it starts coming. With regards to activating the accounts, I'm gonna talk about two options here for us. And these are just some ideas. And as we get more information coming from our CEO as to what exactly is going to happen, we may have to refine them and tweak them. So if you think about it, the one good news that all of us need to take away from here is, and Asha said this over and over, nobody will be left behind. And he's already mentioned two options that we can use in order that, that, that will be used by on passive when we go live. Mm -hmm. Option number one is that once we go live, we're gonna all just jump in and pay our activation fee we know that the final number has not yet been determined, but we do also know that uh, that number based on what our CEO has told us will be something less than $300 per account. So you have that option. Hopefully you have been gathering your $300. I would say, make sure you have $300 per account. It's better for you to have some change left in your pocket than not to have enough to activate your account if the plan is for you to go ahead and activate it as soon as the opportunity arises. And we know that our CEO has actually given us the option where you can actually do some marketing and earn money to activate your account or what I call sell yourself to activation. And I just wanted to talk about those because those are options that we need to be aware of and be planning for because the one thing I keep telling some of my friends is that just think about it that you're a farmer and you have this bountiful crop in your farm. It's ready for harvest, but you don't know the road to the farm. I mean, that's no good. So we need to know the roads to be able to go get the money. And I want us here to be thinking about those at the moment. Um, <clears throat> so let's, let's start with the, um, the idea of uh, actually activating your account. 
And this is when I'm talking about the self-activation. Really, there's nothing to say about it here except to just let people know if you, if you have one account, make sure you have $300 in your bank in some place that you can have access to easily. Because what we don't want to have is a situation where this big shop has been built by OnPassive. They've loaded it with a lot of goods. And all we've been asked to do is open the door so that OnPassive can start pushing traffic in and we don't have the key. So your $300 or less is what we're going to use to open the door and then we'll be in, on, 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 online and making money. What's the advantage of activating your account immediately? One, if you were um, at the last uh, UK Ireland uh, webinar where Ash talked about the wallets that there's going to be a, a withdrawal wallet and a non withdrawal wallet. Remember, if you're not yet paid up and you start making some sales or things, uh, some activities taking place in your virtual office. Those funds will show as not a non withdrawal funds, and you cannot really pull them out of the account. So, the strategy I want us to start thinking about is one, how quickly can I make sure that I have access to the withdrawal wallet? And to get access to the withdrawal wallet, Ash has told us we'll be in the green from day one, whatever that means. But if you're in the green and you can access it, access it is different from somebody who is in the green and just see it there and cannot access. So activating your account as soon as possible gives you access to, be, to the withdrawal wallet. It allows you to be able to use the full features of the products. Again, our CEO had told us that some of those products would have free use features. I think the free, I would rather just go use the full blown thing and really enjoy it than to just play around with the, the, the freebie, but the free one is good to entice us. So once you activate, you have access to the full product. And obviously by activating, you're also triggering on passive to start sending traffic, 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 traffic. Remember, we have guaranteed traffic that will be sent to our website and that will only happen once you have activated. And then at the same time, as Ash had said, you cannot sell something that you don't own. Therefore, once you have activated your account, you will be able to actually, I guess your website will have access for resellers to be able to come in and, and sign up as resellers and market your product, not only market and the money stays uh, in the non-withdrawal wallet, but it stays in the withdrawal wallet. If you have just one account, you know, that's what you do this process. You are in business, even if you don't market it yourself, on passive, start driving your business because that's when you start generating commissions. If you are like some people that have more than one account, well, there are a couple of things that you need to do. First of all, you have to do what I told you on phase one, make sure that you have the money to start funding those accounts. Or if you've been like one of the people that because they don't have access to credit cards or they have relied on other people to pay for their initial $102 and then they've reimbursed them. Remember that those people now will be paying $300 or less for their accounts. And if that individual also have more than one account, they could be maxing out of their credit cards or whatever they're using. So it's wise to start having some discussions with those people who may have helped you so that you know if they will be able to help you or not, or to what extent they'll be able to help you. I don't want you to be relying on the fact that John is going to help, you know, um, activate your accounts, and then you're going to send some money to John. But then I, I am in a situation where my credit card could only activate three accounts, and that's, that's I've, I've used them for all my accounts, and I cannot help you till later. Make sure upfront, we are ready, we're thinking about it, and we want to actually be able to start benefiting as soon as possible. Some other things to consider. <clears throat> if you have multiple accounts, again, I, I'm trying to figure out like what the best strategy would be. 
maybe you make sure the first account is fully activated. You have access to that wallet. You can actually start using that to fund other accounts if you're not able to fund all of them. Um, make sure that you encourage um, your, your direct uh, team members to also activate their account. Remember that um, those are also considered customers for you. If they can activate the accounts, then my, my, my hope is that you, you will be able to generate a lot more money early, earlier than waiting, and then you find a lot of them not able to activate, and you're sitting there, maybe the only rich guy in town. Um, if for some reason, you know, financially, or you're not able to get somebody to activate your account, no, there are, there, are, there are ideas that we need to start thinking about, you know, reach out to other members. And I would say some of the people that are able to keep, keep an open ear because if somebody needs, like in, in your team needs assistance in activating their account. And um, my understanding once the wallets come in is that we may be able to do wallet to wallet transfers. If you can do that and help another person activate their account, then they start getting traffic, they start generating money, they can refund that money that you have helped them. And we as a community will grow faster. And that's why I'm calling it a win-win situation. So think about that and see how as a community here, we can help each other by um, ensuring that others are activated ASAP. Obviously, you may be able to reach out to some other person outside of Unpassif, your bank or credit union, um, and you know get the, the, the dollars that you want to activate your account from. Or as we said, uh, right now, one of the things that most of us uh, should realize is that when we went out there and we're talking to people, a lot of them did not believe in Unpassif. A lot of them wanted, uh, they like the, the doubting Thomases who want to see before they believe. Now is the point at which once we got 12 products or nine products uh, that are marketable and we go out there and we show them, they will be able to come in now as um, resellers or they may come in as customers. And that way, share your link to all those people that you, you reached out to and they did not respond. And you should be able to get yourself activated as soon as possible rather than just wait and hope that things would happen because this is our business. Again, the big, I think most of us realize um, if I throw this up again, that when we were before on passive, most, if not a lot of us were on this side of the quadrant. We were either employees, we were self-employed, and we had a different mindset, an employee mindset. We're trading our time for money. We're working for somebody. Now, as soon as Unpassive launches, we're going to be here, and we're going to be proud owners of businesses. We'll be CEOs of data centers, CEOs of OConnect, and so on. And we have to actually be thinking like business people, we're not, we need to start um, not thinking about a fixed income every week or every month, but income that could increase exponentially, the expenses that we need to do, some proper bookkeeping. And we know now that we actually own our own business and the mindset associated with um, being a business owner. We talked last week and I showed you some examples of some of those people who have, they really make a lot of money on the business side, how they are able to uh, you know, pay their own fair share of taxes. But then that's, those are some of the things we need to learn. For today, I'm gonna make it brief and short, but I'm gonna just touch on this fourth quadrant here. And I'm saying here that once we start getting the money, what do we want to do with it? How do we wanna make sure that I mean, we can take it and spend, spend, spend because we know more is coming, but then that is going to de defeat the, the purpose that our CEO had actually given us this golden opportunity. The whole idea why he had tried to 
why he had opened up this, this opportunity for us was to make sure that we ourselves are empowered to be able to go out and help others. So if you're looking at a situation where you wanna set up a charity, you wanna go open a school, help build a hospital, build a road in your village, or just go help some uh, uh, orphans and so on, you cannot, we will not be able to do that just by uh, taking the money and passing it over. We need, as we had talked over and over, to use that money as a seed that would then grow. And if possible, take that seed, replant it, let it grow again. And why not multiply it a thousand fold so that you can actually, even when we're gone, we can leave a legacy that will just keep generating money to support this project in perpetuity. And some of the tools or some of the ideas for doing that really come in in this fourth quadrant here, where you are actually an investor. And that's what I'm gonna just say we, 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 we talk about today very, very briefly. Why am I saying very, very briefly is because um, we are a global group of people here. Some of the concepts that I may have sort of like to go into detail may apply to one country and not to another one, especially I'm in the United States. Some of the things I say here in the United States may not necessarily be somebody who is like in, in, in the Caribbean or in Africa or in India, but I just want us to start thinking about those, do your research and try to start develop what I call successful people thinking mindsets. Um, last week, one of those ideas when we talked about was that, you know, most of us think, oh, where am I gonna allocate my assets? And that's when you go meet like some of these smart financial advisors and they try to allocate your portfolio in different buckets. But we are also talking here about asset location where you physically put it, not even how you balance it within that category. And I touched on this idea of, there are some of those locations where your assets get taxed or which I call the taxable uh, uh, section. There are some where they tax deferred, but you pay the tax later on. And there are others that are tax advantage. Guess what? A lot of the business people, they tend to use those tax advantage strategies. If you remember this slide, which we shared last week, you can actually see here that these gentlemen that are on this slide, the amount of money that they make, they are worth, for example, Warren Buffett is worth um, 24.3 billion. Last year, he made about $125 million, out of which he paid about $23 million in taxes. You say, wow, that's a big amount of tax. But guess what? That's less than really 0.1% of um, his worth. So when we start thinking about all of this, it's not that they're not they are, they are cheating on taxes, although sometimes they push it to the limit, but there are tax systems that are available to the rich. There are tools that are available to the rich. And what I want is, I don't care where you are, you can learn some of those because on passive has given us this unique opportunity where we're probably going to be going into this category of people and we need to understand how those actually um, work. And I've stressed it over and over and over and over that when you go out there, you need to get some qualified people to work with you. But my purpose has been to sort of just share some concepts so that when you sit down and you're talking with somebody, you are having a conversation, a two-way conversation, at least not to the same level, but you have a better understanding and not being just lectured at. So um, I'm going to spend um, a few minutes and talk about uh, what I call a wealth creation strategies. And you see that I'm focusing on now we have the money. How do we get the money to be working and generating more money for us so you can generate more money? If you think about it from a wealth creation strategy, 
These are some of the elements that people want to actually make sure that they consider. I'm not saying it's an exclusive list, but I'm saying these are some of the things that people will want to think about. So if I look at it and say, okay, what are the things that me and you would want when it comes to creating wealth? We want to make sure that there is no risk in whatever it is that we're putting our money. We don't lose it. And there are, there are no, I mean, minimize the risk as much as possible. If there are some guarantees that somebody can give us, yes, we want to make, make sure that we get those guarantees. And we don't want any penalties either. Either penalties from paying early, penalties from paying late, all those penalties, if we can get rid of them, that's something we want to make sure we don't have penalties. At the same time, you want to make sure that you have control over your funds and you have liquidity. What I mean is if you need some money tomorrow, you, you don't have to start going through a fire sale to get that money or you don't have to pay taxes or pay a penalty to get that money. You need some protection. Protection in from many angles. I'm looking at the protection from the market, protection, um, let's say from uh, the person that is actually providing the, the, from yourself that you're not there and you have some protection for yourself. And the other important idea about wealth creation is that you want that money that or to be able to give you leverage. What I mean here is, let's say you can put in, pay in about $1,000 and get $4,000 out. Or, you know, if you want, if you think about um, buying a house, you know, you put in a down payment for those of us who are able to use mortgages and it gives you a property which is much more. So you're leveraging it. Uh, you want to make sure that when it comes to taxes, you can defer the taxes so that you're growing your, um, your money much faster. And I, I, I remember at one of my uh, lectures, I actually showed somebody how, you know, just we'll run it just on Excel, showing how growing, uh, multiplying, compounding money that you're paying taxes versus compounding money that you're not paying taxes makes a huge difference. Plus, if you can get that money out at the end without necessarily paying taxes or paying the minimum amount of taxes, I think everybody wants to do that. Collateral is the other key feature that people look at when they want to be able to uh, build wealth. Say you have an asset and then you have a, an opportunity that arises and you need to go get that, you get to get money from one uh, from one investment and put in another one, you can just use some of those assets as a collateral to get another. So literally using wealth to build wealth. And that's why we talk about money. And if at the end of the day, you're able to de deduct some of those investment dollars from your taxes, that's a better idea. And obviously the idea about, or the idea of wealth transfer. Many of us, we talked about it, we talked about estate planning, we talked about wheels and so on. Being able to build the wealth and know that even at the end of the day, when we are about to depart from the surface of this earth, we're gonna actually be able to transfer all, or if not as much of it to the next generation is an appealing feature when people are building wealth. So what I've done is that um, there are a couple of, what I call vehicles that I used for those purposes. Some of them are very, very US centric. So I have blocked them out. Some of them, I think, even though they may be focused on the US, uh, they will probably apply to other areas. So I'm gonna just go through them and we talk about them briefly. So when I talk about mutual funds here, you can just add the word stocks to them. Um, Yes, if you compare them, I want you to look at them compared to the second column. If the color here says that, okay, does, does this give me liquidity and is this vehicle good for, for providing liquidity? And then it has a check. If I come here and this one says no, but the other one says, 
let me say um um say here and it says yes and this one says no you know there is a mismatch so those if you just go down i'm not going to spend too much time but i'm saying there that as, as wealth building vehicles you realize that things like mutual funds don't really check very very highly when it comes to some of these um these wealth building strategies there is nothing that's going to be 100 but we're looking at vehicles that the wealth you use that sort of help them and that sort of check in a lot. Mutual funds are very, very useful and stocks are very, very useful because when you invest in them, there is a growth potential. If you were to need money, like tomorrow, you can call your estate, uh, your broker and ask them to sell those stocks. And if you're lucky and you pick the right one, you could really, really make some good money. But when you sell, especially like here in the States, there is capital gains uh, taxes. In some countries, you may not even have the opportunity to get involved in, in some of this because uh, the, the markets are not fully developed. The other area that I wanna just touch, um, touch on is uh, like in our homes. Yes, we need to upgrade the quality of our lives once on, on passive comes in. And I remember about a year ago, uh, Mr. Mufare did say, once on passive goes live, some of us will actually change our zip code or postcode, or let me say change your home from where you live to maybe um, a different area, which is either more upmarket, more secure, whatever, whatever feature you're looking at. Or well, some people may wanna get a bigger home, or maybe you know, some, a few may decide that they have a big enough home, they just wanna clean it up. Our home is primarily a shelter for us. As an investment, yes, over time, it does appreciate, but you can never just put all your money in there and hope that, okay, because my home is my home, I'm gonna make a lot of money from it. Uh, things like the, the savings accounts in the banks, remember last week we talked about them and I said, when you get your money from on passive, please don't let it sit in your um, your bank accounts because you, you, the banks are going to be doing what I call the rule of 72 on you. If you remember the rule of 72, how long it takes for money to double. So the bank will take that money. They will thank you like a premier customer. They will give you maybe one to 5%. Then you go out and you come in the next door and you say, oh, by the way, Mr. Banker, I need a loan or I want a credit card. And they'll say, as a preferred customer, we're going to give you a credit card that has an interest of about 15%. So somebody is making money and it's definitely not you. So our bank accounts should just be repositories for our money to flow from on passive until we figure out where that money is going to create wealth for us. Because you'll probably not be able to create wealth by just letting your money sit in a bank account. If you're happy just seeing a big balance and smiling at it, fine and good. But if you're looking at growing wealth, then that may not be one of the best vehicles that people should be using. I'm gonna skip the next column <clears throat> and I'm gonna to touch on things like real estate. <clears throat> Real estate, let me contrast it here to the, uh, when I mentioned home and real estate. With the real estate, I'm talking here of income generating properties, not your home. Your home, if you remember the training we did um, with regards to assets and liabilities, we actually classify the home as a liability because if for some reason we stopped working, um, we still have to pay our mortgages unless you have paid your home completely. You may still need to pay utilities, pay for maintenance. But when we're talking about real estate here, we're looking at a property that you have put in there to be able to generate income for you. It's gonna have some appreciation. It's also gonna have some maintenance costs associated with it. But when you look at it, uh, it, it is one of those, Think about some of the real wealthy people that you see around. 
we can even think about our former president like Donald Trump and so on. The people that um, went and bought almost half of Detroit, Michigan when he went bankrupt and then turned around and have the citizens all renting it out. Or you think about, you know, people who have um, A, B, and Bs or really any investment property. The key thing here is, I don't care what country you are in, there are the, the key thing to consider is that when it comes to real estate, location, 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 location. And please don't, I would not advise that you take your money and start by just building or buying um, a property which is just like one unit for rental because you lose out on economies of scale. When you start going to multi-unit properties or estates, then that's when you start talking about real estate. Or if you're looking at building some resorts, and I, I know like Dr. Derek at some point had a lecture about these eco-friendly houses that we could actually have. Those are some ideas that why not go create an eco park somewhere, create something that is unique that people will wanna come there. It stays there and it, it can generate income for us. Even when we are not there, it just keeps going. So that is one thing that I would tell people to consider. Um, for some people, I'll say, you know, in some countries, hey, get yourself a good farm. If you can get a farm, um, even here in the United States, I think the farmers are probably, <clears throat> they probably got some of the best tax breaks that you can think about. And if you think about the value of the land itself and say that, you leave it with your great great grandchildren and a hundred years from now i wonder how much that piece of land could be so when we talk about real estate i just want us to think about it you could open a small plantation for yourself wherever you are you could have um any type of farm as long as it's a decent one that can give you income those might be options that people should be considering then um <clears throat> I did, I did spend time um, and I talked, I talked very briefly about this last, last week and I shared with you that um, especially here in the United States, I know in Europe, um, life insurance has become one of the vehicles where a lot of the wealthy put their money. And I remember sharing um, that slide which talked about somebody like uh, Elon Musk in 2014 buying one for $201 million. So if we think about it, this guy probably paid as much as 60 or $70 million into that $201 million. And what he did was he instantly created a $201 million uh, a state for himself the day that he actually signed that policy. So if you are looking at creating income for generations to come, especially people who are here in the United States, that's something that you have to consider. Obviously you have to qualify. It's not something that everybody can, can, can be accepted for, but then I don't care what level of qualification that they give you. If money starts coming from on passive and you understand how to fund it, it could be a positive vehicle. And why I've been talking to people, especially those of us um, who have been, uh, some of the people that I've been talking to in on passive is the fact that um, whenever we talked about it, people always look at it as a cost and they looked at it as something that I have to die and someone else benefits from it. But the wealthy actually use it as a vehicle to build wealth tax deferred. They can use it tax free. And if they don't use it, they can pass it as a huge, huge estate to the next generation. Or even if they get into, um, they are old age and they need like long-term care like we do here where you find people living in homes, like some products in the United States who do that. And remember I had, if, I, if you just, just let me just 
clear this and just show, try to contrast the two between the um, between what we want and what some of these vehicles produce. And you see that literally most, maybe one or two things that don't really cover. And you see now why when, if you are somebody who reads like the Baron magazine or some of the Wall Street journals, those people there are the ones that would discuss this type of topics because again, most of us have been on the low or middle income class while some of the people who are in the know, they understand these vehicles and use them. Don't actually believe what I'm telling you. Let me just show you something I pulled from online. This was 2017. This was um, a, a GE a proxy statement for those of you who understand what proxy statement, basically they, they, they put out all the compensation that, I mean, in addition to other financial information, they even say how much the executives are compensated. So if you look at this, this was actually for 2017, again, as I said, it's a bit dated, but this was General Electric. It's a big company here, not only in the US, but globally. What I want to point to you is really, if you look at what they did to their executives, this guy here who was the CEO at that time. And the reason I circled this is that you can see that in cost, in terms of life insurance, this is, look at the, 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 num the, the numbers in the circle here. Those are the dollars that these guys were paying in on a yearly basis to actually pay for premiums for life insurance. So you ask yourself, why would somebody want to take half a million dollars of their money instead of going and putting it into some real serious investment? They're putting it into these vehicles or the chief, the chief financial officers, why they'll be putting almost $400,000 of their money in this vehicle? Because they understand this simple concept that if you consider yourself as a farmer, then what they did was they paid taxes on their grain and then they, they invested. And then when, it, when the grain produces a bumper harvest at the end here, they are able to take that harvest and take it with them tax-free, income tax-free and not have to worry. If they don't even use it, they pass it to their generations again without any taxes. Last week, and I think I have a couple of slides that I showed again here, there are some countries that even outside of the United States will be able to take advantage of these products. So as on perseverance, there is possibility that some of us who are not in the United States when the apples start fl flowing, you will be able to actually, or you could qualify to get some of these vehicles. And I want that you look, reach out, talk to people who may be able to help you or find out what the conditions are so that you can also benefit and generate wealth because we are global citizens. We don't have to restrict our wealth generation to one location. We need to go to wherever it's gonna help us. Let me just show you a simple example of what I mean when you talk about generating wealth. Just imagine here that some of us now we have um, kids uh, that are um, in non passive. Let's say somewhere down the road you have a one year old kid, and that the money coming in from non passive, you can literally put in just about $1,500. And you pay that, I just did this example going only for 15 years. You pay say $1,500 for a, a month over 15 years, you will probably put in about 263,000 invested in that chair. Let's say that we did this and just set it aside because of course on passive money, some more money is coming. And this, and this, this, this uh, product just kept, you know, accumulating and accumulating. 
And then I just picked a random age of 85. There was no reason for me picking 85, but I said, okay, let me just look and see if I, somebody contributed this amount just for 15 years, that's about just over a quarter of a million, left it to be just accumulating. If this kid got to the age of 85, this is about $20 million that they would have accumulated. So the beauty of this is that if the person has a capability, let's say that this on passive account, as Dr. Derek said, was generating not, let me just come right down and say was generating like $5,000 a, a month. Now, if you take this one here, that's let's say it's almost two and a half times, two and a half times here. By the time that it's like 83, assuming that this kid just left the thing to be, to be going, I, I looked at the number. By the time if the kid lived to 95, they will have over $50 million that they could just leave to the next generation or put in a trust or put somewhere. And just the interest of that could continuously grow for generations to come. What about somebody who is much older? I just decided to play on some random ages here. Some of us who are getting closer to 60 years, what if you, we, we, we end up activating accounts and we push some effort and we had like $6,000 extra you know, uh, income that we wanna spend. Yep, it's possible to double it or almost three times, three X the amount. And that money goes tax free to the next generation. These are some of the vehicles that, again, you need to do your research. You need to know that not everybody qualifies. You need to know that um, there are some fine details about how the taxes are working. Luckily, the government here, when they've tried to change the taxes, um, somehow they have almost always left this particular area, maybe because the people changing the rules benefit from it. So knowing about it may be a beneficial to you. I did share these tables. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but I just want us to know that people, especially in the, um, in the Caribbean, you, uh, in the countries that are called like quotes, um, quotes D and uh, C, which means that you could actually qualify to have this type of vehicles in the United States. Uh, people from Europe, obviously, uh, you see that some of the European countries are already taken care of. Um, some, some countries in the uh, Far East and so on, yes, a few of them may, may qualify as, I mean, I look at it, India here is a B, so they will be able to qualify. And if those are the things that are out there, the bottom line is that if we understand them and we go out there and we start preparing our mindsets, then <clears throat> the idea of just investing, like go buy some sexy stock that everybody is talking about today and then tomorrow it's gone. Or even if it doesn't go, it still grows. That might be a good thing. But most of the time, uh, the average growth in some of those, if you think about a lot of the stocks, yes, you can get about 7%, but you end up paying taxes on some of those. We need to first and foremost, get our minds out from this left-hand side of the quadrant, which is what we've been trying to do. Let's see how we can get rid of the employee mindset, the self-employed mindset. Let's see how we can transition ourselves into being business thinking. We talked about some of the habits, we talked about associating with successful people, but to complete the quadrant, we need to also be able to move ourselves and start understanding some fundamentals of invest of the of the actual true investor who is not out there just looking at let me make a quick uh, return but looking at creating long term wealth new york city for example or all the major cities in this world are built by people who have actually found themselves into this fourth quadrant the skyscrapers and the story buildings that we see, 
they're owned by somebody. And those buildings are basically there for hundreds of years, just going from one generation to the other. Here, we have the opportunity at Unpassive to be able to do that. I'm not saying that we do it only in New York City, but we can do it in other areas. And the purpose for doing that is one, to be able to create this generational wealth, which would enable us to actually achieve what it is that we want to help our CEO do, which is uplift humanity. So uh, that is what I had to share with you today. I hope it was useful. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stop the slideshow. And I don't know if there'll be questions, but if there's some questions, we can discuss them as we go along. Thank you very much. And back to you, Mr. Dr. Derek. He ran away. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much, um, Dr. John. Really appreciate it. That was um, indeed awesome. Really, really appreciate it. Um, and just write down your questions, please. Write down your questions. Jot it down. Use um, a, a pen, paper, um, slate, um, crayon, um, paintbrush, um, whatever you want to use, just use it and write down your questions for the time being. Uh, because right now we are also going to have the mindset with the with our with our um, inspirational speaker, um, of course, and that person, of course, we know uh, that uh, this person actually is our own Jacqueline Warner. Uh, she is an inspirational speaker and most definitely an entrepreneur. Um, she also hosts her own live show. Um, so she's a live show host. Uh, so at this time for our mindset, uh, let us make me welcome Jacqueline Warner. Thank you. Yes, hi, good evening, good okay. evening, good evening to all the founders, to the leaders, to our executives, to Mr. Ash, even though he's not there, but let me tell you the products represents him and his team. It's such a privilege to be here. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Derek, for allowing me. Awesome presentation, Dr. John. You're so amazing. Thank you for your heart, heart of sharing and mostly heart of love. So thank you so much for bringing it, giving us the opportunity to prepare ourselves, prepare our mindset. And that's what it's all about. Yes, like um, Dr. Derek said and Ash said, the money is there and we don't have to worry about the money. That's a, the least of our worries. We don't have to worry about the money. When Mr. Ash said, we don't have to worry about the money, let me tell you, that in itself is so deep. For someone to guarantee, guarantee you in a sense that you don't have to worry about the money because of the amazing products, uh, because of his vision, because of the opportunity. Um, I don't think we could get an opportunity like this ever again. Maybe somewhere um, years to come or centuries to come, but not now. We have the opportunity now and we need to definitely change our mindset. You know, Ash has given us so much already. Um, and I remember him saying on Saturday that they are working harder for us than we are working for ourselves. And that stays with me and it keeps on, it just keep on repeating itself that to know someone is out there working so hard for us, harder than our parents, harder than our teachers, harder than our friends. So we really have to give, um, appreciate him, appreciate Mr. Ash so much and be so grateful to him for sharing his vision, his dreams with us. So that's why it's important for our mindsets to be in the right place. And we talk about so many different areas already, surrounding ourselves with people, 
that is going in the same direction. And we already are surrounded by the people that's going in the same direction because we are all founders. That's what's so amazing. Now you don't have to, you could check that off your list. That one is covered, you know? Now we can make friends. So since you already surrounded, you can reach out like Dr. John say, said, listen out for names and you see them, you come to the webinars, you hear them, if your spirit connect with them, it doesn't matter if you connect or not because we're all family. So right there, you don't have to worry about surrounding yourself with amazing individuals because we already are surrounded with them right here on this amazing platform. And then, you know, getting the stuff ready, preparing yourself, all of us, myself included, preparing ourselves financially in all different aspects of being a business owner. I think that what has to get, it almost seems like we have to be injected if we don't understand right now that we are business owners. That is so amazing. You know, when you come to these platforms and, and it's two and three, this is 371 people. I never been on a Zoom call with that many people, even in my entrepreneurship, in my journey. Your spirit is being fed here and it's fed all positive. It's fed with confidence. It is fed with love. So it's more reason that for a mindset to start, you know, changing up, knowing that is is really serious and that we have to take some steps. We have to do our research. All those things that we're doing is mindset, you know, going and finding out the accountant that we need to speak with. Because Dr. John has given us all these tips and we get recording. So it's no reason for no one to be left behind because everything is being supplied to us. Even these webinars here where we will have to pay thousands of dollars just to get this information and not even in the amount in, in, in sections. You won't even get all this that Dr. John has given us to that tonight for free. This alone is telling you, your mind's supposed to be already changing. When, when Dr. Derek starts the, the meeting, he starts with a, a team. We have a team. You know, you feel love. You feel so great in this atmosphere. Your mindset's supposed to be already changing, okay? What we need to start doing now is implementing because my mindset is changing for sure. I might have a little head start because I'm an entrepreneur, but no, it got those who even have own businesses. So even if you're on the lower end, it doesn't matter. You're supposed to feel it. Your spirit's supposed to unite with this awesome atmosphere that we're in. You know, this awesome speakers that come up and speak, you know, you get love. I remember Sister Debbie, when she had debt in her family, she was still there. Dr. Derek, the same way. You see commitment, you see consistency, all that is helping us to follow what is already being projected to, on, to us every time we come on this webinar. So, Let's implement what we was given so freely. Let's start looking into the things that Dr. John spoke about. He's given us heads up. So we are ready, equipped. So when we, like he said, when you go sit down in front of the accountant, that you will know something already and you just won't be there sitting down, listening to them talk to us and we shaking our head and saying yes and sign on our money away. No way. We are here to grow the money that we receive. We're not only here to spend and, and enjoy it, but we're here basically to help uplift humanity, just like Mr. Ash said. We're gonna be here to help each other. We're gonna be able to help the people out there that didn't get the opportunity. We will be able still to offer them an amazing opportunity. You know what I mean? Mr. Ash is so loving his he has a big old heart he could have closed the door as founders he didn't have to go to resellers but still even those that we invited and didn't get an opportunity you know 
they have an opportunity still. I was still talking to this guy. This, I said, I'm so sorry you didn't come in as a founder, but you know what? I have an amazing opportunity still. I'm going to look into it and I'm going to get you in, you know, because I know they need it. We all need it. We've been on the bottom for too long. And now we have this amazing opportunity. Don't leave yourself behind because we are getting everything we need. We're getting fed every time you come to a webinar. When you go to your back office, the information is there for you to read. You don't have to go down the block or go and take a class to learn about unpassing. All that is mindset. Because when you come to the meeting and you start rapping with the other talking and speaking, they know that you are interested. They know that you want to help. They know that you want to make a change in our lives. So don't take this opportunity for granted, you know, and, and the mindset is already there because we've been surrounded with amazing people. We have, when you hear Ash talk, that's it right there alone. You know, we get to meet with the CEO Tell me how much companies or even your own jobs, the way you sit directly with the CEO and you can ask some questions. Don't take this opportunity for granted. Look at those that have been there from 2018 and they're still here. I came in on the late bus, but I was able to hop on the train and I'm not getting off. So take everything that we have spoken, um, Verona, Brown, Willis, all she has spoken onto us also, even, even the founders who have shared their stories with us, don't, let's unite as one. This is the unpassive community. We have our own community and what Ash is displaying, what he wants, he's displaying it um, with us. We are the example that there can be a better life, that we can, can be a better world, and that we can love, learn to love one another and work as one together. So I thank you so much, Dr. Derek. I thank you, Dr. John. I thank you founders for your listening ear. And let's just do it because you know what? We're in it to win it all the way. Thanks again. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, thank thank you, you. very much. Really appreciate it. Um, Zati and thank also you, Dr. John. Really appreciate it. Thank you all so very much.